Good morning, Malone. If you guys would just stand with us and we can start the semester off right in worship. Good morning, Malone. Are you alive this morning? Yeah, barely, a little bit. All right, it's the first community worship of the semester. We're so excited you're with us. My name is JD, and I'm the worship arts coordinator here at Malone University. We're going to do a little call and response real quick. If you know it, say it out. So God is good all the time, and all the time. God is good, and all the time. Amen, amen. I wanted to encourage you guys um, with a verse this morning. Um, that comes out of Philippians. 
Um, I don't know how your first semester was, um, but for a lot of people that I talked to um, and sat with, it was pretty rough. Um, There's some tough spots, there was some stress, and man, it hit me too. Um, messed with anxiety, and it's really easy to get um, lost in a semester where there's so much stress and so much pressure on your shoulders. But I want to share with you a word of the God we serve. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace that is in God only comes from Him. If you're wrestling with in internal turmoil, if you're struggling on where your direction is, your peace will only be found in God. So let's bring it to him this morning. Lord, I pray over the semester that this will be a semester of us resting in your peace, in your love, in your grace. Would you draw our hearts back to you, close to you? Lord, when we run away, you are so quick to show love and mercy every time. May we trust in that. And would you surround us with your holy peace that can only come from you. Lord, we love you. Amen.
We thank you that you paid it all on the cross. And we love you. And we give this day to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. What's up, Malone? How's everybody doing? Good. Well, it's so good to see you all. It's good to be back here with you all. I don't know how you feel. I feel re-energized. I feel that there's an energy in the room. I'm excited about that. Whenever you're excited, it makes me excited. Now we're all excited. That's wonderful. And to kick off our semester, uh, for the first five weeks, we're going to be breaking down here in community worship, uh, Romans chapter 12. And to bring to us the first two verses, verses one and two, this morning, we have a very special guest with us. Some of you may recognize her from Canton Players Guild productions such as The Sister Act and Memphis, one of my favorite musicals, one of the few musicals I enjoy, Memphis, shout out to Memphis. Uh, starting this weekend, you'll be able to see her in the production uh, of Doubt. On Sunday mornings, you can catch her as worship pastor, but for us today, as she would say, she's simply Joy. Would you all please join me in welcoming Mrs. Joy Ellis. Praise God, Malone. Amen. It is truly a, a wonderful pleasure to be here with you this morning. And um, the praise team did an amazing job. Can we just give God a hand clap for them? Amen. Hallelujah. God is truly, truly worthy. And um, when you think about uh, whether, wherever you are in your, in your, uh, in your walk with Christ, when you think about the ability to wake up in the morning and be able to inhale and exhale, able to move around a little bit, you might not want to get out of bed, but you swing those legs over the edge of the bed and you have some feeling in your legs and you can stand when you can get your good yawn and you can stretch. No matter where you are in your walk with God, you can say that God is worthy of the praise for that. Amen. So what I need you to do right now, just for, I mean, goodness, three seconds, would you just give God praise for your own life? Where he's brought you to and what he's done for you, the ways that he's made, even when you didn't know that he was looking out for you, he's been looking out for you. And he had you on his mind and has you on his mind. And for that, God is worthy of praise. Amen. God, we thank you for this day, and we ask that you would be with us, God, as I share the word. God, I said when you called me, God, that I would never stand up without you giving me something to say. God, I have nothing to say. You have all to say. Hide me behind your cross this morning. God, allow your people to be edified, hallelujah, and the devil horrified, and you glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I, um, as you heard, um, Corey say, Pastor Corey say, I have the first two verses of Romans 12, um, 1 and 2, and it reads like this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove or that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's Romans 12, 1 and 2. And as I was studying this, and I, um, maybe not like some of you guys, I, I really did grow up in the church. My parents are both pastors. Like, I'm, like I was drenched in this thing, right? And so um, I have heard this scripture over and over again. I've heard it preached over and over and over again. And yet last night as, as I was kind of preparing the, the, the ends of this and kind of bringing every, all, everything together, God showed it to me differently. Don't we just love God for that? Like God would just, he's such a revealer. Like, you know, you can hear something or see something like a thousand times, then God just opens it up to you and it makes it so profound. But really all he wanted me to do is talk to you today about his light. And I love how God gives us instructions all throughout his word. And if we just have one ounce, somebody say one ounce of desire and willingness to follow through. 
his grace and mercy then steps in and gives us the power and the ability to carry them out. How many of you know that if God guides you to something, he will also lead you through it? If he tells you to go, he's not gonna be like, hey, Jim, go over there. And then be like, sweet, peace, bye. No, he doesn't do that. He's like, listen, I told you to go. And so therefore, if I tell you to go, I'm gonna lead you. If you would just listen, if you're just willing to hear my voice, if you're, if you're willing to be a vessel and to be worked and, and be used by me, then I'm gonna take you the whole way. Does anybody need some kind of direction in their life? Anybody? I mean, you know, in college, and, and I remember being in college so many years ago and, and how like, it was just a time where I was just trying to figure things out. Like I, you know, I, I had been led on this path um, throughout some time of, 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 you know, just growing up and being in my parents' home. But there was a point where I had to get to a place where I needed like direction. And I, I needed to know that it wasn't because my mom told me to go. It wasn't because my dad told me to go. I needed direction that I would be able to wake up in the morning and say, this is what I know I'm supposed to do. This is how I know I'm supposed to do it. And this is why I know I'm supposed to do it. And so God gives us instruction. He gives us, he gives us instruction. And he tells us to go where he, where he sends us, but he also goes with us. Somebody say amen. And so as I was beginning to study and I was looking at this and I'm just like, yeah, you know, we can talk about, you know, not being conformed to this world and how, you know, ugly the world is and how God wants us to be set apart. And this is all true. He does want us to be set apart. But I said, how, God, how do you want us to be set apart? How can we do this successfully without turning people off? And God showed me, he said, I want you to talk for a moment about the power and the purpose of my light the power and the purpose of my light. There's something different that happens in your life when you're introduced to God. When you see God through someone else, it's not anything anybody can tell you. It's just something that you know is different. Something about them, something about the situation, something about the environment, something has changed. Something has, has illuminated inside of me. And I don't know what it is or where it came from, but I know I need more of it. That's the effect of God's light. And all he does is he asks us to be a representation of his light in his way. And I don't know about you and if you've been looking at the news and all the craziness that's going on and the hatred and all the bigotry, just everything that's going on, we need to be true examples of God's light. And it needs to be right. Not, not the way that we might think that it should be. Not, not in a way that we think that, you know, we should speak down on people or tell them everything they're doing wrong, but a light that draws and not turn people away. Anybody want to experience that type of light? That's all right. You can clap your hands. That's, that's okay. So God showed me something about his light. He said, listen, true light never has to introduce that it's light. Think about it. Does a light have to come on but hey, I'm light? No. Because when the light comes on, you know what happens. Right? Darkness is gone and the light comes. You're able to see clear. You're able to, 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 to be able to see what's in front of you. That's how God's light is. He's like, listen, you don't have to go in and be like, hey, here I am. I'm light. I'm right. Because then people are looking at you like, dude, sit down. Relax. And then they're, you're, not, they're not, you're not the person that they want to turn and talk to. You're the person that they kind of like, all right, you're doing too much. God's like, look, let me show you what it's like to be true light bearers. Light provides clear sight. Light reveals. Light brings comfort. And in some cases, it can bring discomfort. You ever been in the club and, and you're there so long that they, that they turn the lights on? You're like, oh, what was I sitting in? You know, you're just looking you're like, oh my goodness. You know what I mean? Like you get up and then even worse than that, you look at the person you're talking to. Like, dang, you look so much better in the dark. Can I be real or, or I'm sorry, am I? You might not invite me back, I'm sorry, Malone. But 
that's what light does. You know, it's like that thing where it just provides like some clarity. You know, there's places that I've seen in the light that like, if I go in the dark, like, no, I know what this place is about. Like, nah, I'm good. Like, I'm not sitting down. I'm real nice, nasty about that kind of stuff. Like, I don't like sitting in sticky stuff. Like, I don't put my hand, arms down on tables most times because I just don't. I just don't. But anyway, that was like so clear to me. Like, I'm in a club. I'm there so late. They flick the lights on or even at a party, they flick the lights on and you look around like, this is what I've been doing. Like, okay, if you're, if you're sane enough to know, you know, you realize like, if this is where I've been, this is the environment that I've been in, but that's the kind of stuff, that's what light will do. And light has done that, did that in my own life. Like when I really encountered God and God was able to come in and he came in my heart and I asked him to like, show me some stuff about myself, man, there were some things I'm like, dang, that's how I was living. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't say dang. My dad is probably looking down like joy. Do not say that anymore. I'm sorry. I won't say that. Um, but yeah, I mean, seriously, like you look at the things in your life and you look at what you've been going through and, and the things that you've been allowing to happen to you and the things that you've been settling with anybody settled in here. I mean, for anything, you know, and you look back and you're just like, gosh, I didn't even have to settle for that. Like you had so much greater for me. That's kind of what God's light does. Like, I'm, you know, really, I, I, I've been here. I've been struggling with this and doing this. And as soon as that light comes on in your life, God is able to show you. And he says, look, I had this for you. I have that for you. But you kept going back to this. But look, where my light has shown, this is what I have for you. So in, in verse 2, I looked. And there's a challenge. I said, God, man, you have really challenged us. It says, live in this world, but don't become like it. So we're to live in it, we're to walk in it, thrive in it, make friends in it, work in it, hang out in it, sleep in it, but not allow it to change us. You say, change me from what? I'm glad you asked. Change you from what God has created you to be which is light in the midst of dark places. You find your purpose by being who and what God created you to be. And that is a light. How do you become a light? Guys are asking so many great questions today. You're, you become a light by asking God to come in your heart and then entering into relationship with him. Just saying, God, listen, I'll be a light. I'll be a light. Show me. God loves it when we're willing. He loves it when we want what he wants for us. He loves that because it shows us, shows him that he, that we trust him. Do you know that his light is not for our glory? And so many Christians have that twisted. Like we walk around like, you know, I'm, I'm a light, you know, Jesus is in me and da, 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 da. And we're, and we're all um, boasting in this thing, but it's not for your glory. Somebody look at somebody and say, that's not for you. It's not for you. Like, I know you were excited, but it's not for you. But I will tell you what is. The benefits of being his light, that is for you. The benefits of lighting dark places for him. As we shine where he sends us, we get the glory of the perks of being connected to a great God. Somebody say amen. Where we were once walked in confusion, now we have clarity. Anybody been confused? Hallelujah. Now we're walking in clarity. When we give our heart to him and he becomes a light in us, where we fell short in decision-making and implementation, now we're able to be decisive and our execution is on point. Where we lacked good judgment and who we are, we allowed in our space. God now gives us the supernatural ability to discern the intent. Somebody say amen, of those who come, who we come in contact with. Some of you guys need to ask God to allow you to discern the intent of the people sitting right next to you. The list goes on and on. Paul proposes a greater, a greater option than conforming to this world. He says, he says, look, I know I know that you're in this world, but don't conform to this world. Why? He knew what it was like to be set apart. In other words, this world has nothing for you. He says, better yet, be ye transformed and not by outward appearance, which Christians, and, and we're so good at that. We can look good. We can put on the mask. We can put on the right clothes and everything and just call ourselves holy. He's like, no, 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 no. No, scratch that. Scratch the outward stuff. Scratch that speaking things that you don't even believe, but you know, you know, you're supposed to say. Scratch that and allow your mind to be transformed. Allow your mind to be transformed. 
Allow your mind to be transformed. I wish I had time to deal with the power of the mind because you've heard it time and time again in really tough situations. Has anybody ever said to you, you know what, it's mind over matter? Anybody heard that? Why did they say that? Because if in your mind you decide that you can get through it, that you can go through it, that you can accomplish it, whatever it is, guess what? You will do it. All it takes is you making up your mind. Anybody have been a witness to that? Once you made up your mind, like, look, I'm tired of taking this class over and over and over again. I'm making up my mind that this time I will pass. You make it up in your mind and then you see it to be so. It's mind over matter. Paul said renew your mind because he understood that if you, if you work on getting your mind right, everything else would fall into place. Somebody look at your neighbor and just say, get your mind right. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. Because as you walk in that the Holy Spirit begins to guide you in what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect for your forgotten what is perfect and God's will for your life that is how your light stays bright wherever you go that's how you get over um, not conforming and transforming that's how you allow God's light to shine through you and in you and then you being guided by God's God's light are then uh, then you're able to know what is his will for your life. So many people just wonder, wondering around, wondering around. Let me see, I might like this today. I like that tomorrow. I, I, I believe this. Oh, I don't know if I believe that. Oh, I'm gonna go here because this is what I like. Oh, I don't wanna go there. No type of, no type of, of clear guidance. God is saying, listen, I want to put my light in you because where I put my light, I'm going to make sure that the places that you go are blessed. I'm going to make sure that the decisions that you make are blessed. I'm going to make sure that the friends that you come in contact with are blessed because of you. It's his light that makes the difference. And so while so many years we take on the, the, the thing of being like, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be conformed. I'm going to be transformed by renewing of my mind. And God's like, basically, look, look, the, the way that you do that is you become my light. Because when my light steps in, everybody knows. You don't even have to open up your mouth and say anything. People will be drawn to you and say, gosh, what, what is different about you? I need what you have. And then you can open up your mouth and then talk about the goodness and the grace of God. Not anything that's, that's self, that, that's self glorifying. You, if anybody know, if you have been anywhere, you understand that your stuff is a mess. Oh, um, maybe I'm the only one. I'm sorry. Like what, what you were before God came into your life was filth and junk. And the only reason why I'm worth looking at right now is because of his glory. When you think about it like that, guys, it helps you to witness. It helps you to live. You don't walk around like you got everything going on in and of yourself. Then people are drawn to you. And when you witness, you don't have a shaking finger. Like who, who wants that? Like you're da -da 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 -da. and then what you've done in the past that you know that only God delivered you from. But yet and still you see someone in front of you and you're spewing that stuff. God's like, no, that's not me. In closing, this is how you know light always will have power over darkness. The enemy of our souls has a counterfeit of all the great and wonderful things that God has. He's like, a, he loves to counterfeit. Prime example here, God's light doesn't turn people away. It draws people. God's light isn't one of interrogation. It provides the answer. God's light isn't to expose and exploit. It is one that brings truth and awareness in love. That's my challenge to you today in this semester, that you walk in love that you ask God, say, hey, God, like, I need you to work in me. I need you to take me to the places where you want me to go. Because my light isn't supposed to go where your light's supposed to go. And your light, light is not supposed to go where my light is supposed to go. That's how he covers this whole thing.
Did you get anything out of this? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God, I'm gonna bring Brother Corey up. God bless you, Malone, thank you for having me. So my prayer, my prayer for us all as we kick off our semester this week is that we allow these words uh, delivered through the Holy Spirit to joy and then through joy to us um, to compel us to action, to inform the way we move in the classroom, to inform the way we move about the campus, to inform the decisions that we make, to inform our own spirituality. Next week, we'll pick back up with verse three and furthermore. But until then, my prayer is that you reflect and meditate on the words that God spoke this morning. Go in peace, love you all, bless up.